Today with Joseph Prince. The Lord loves you and the Lord saves. The God who flung the stars is the same God who binds your broken heart and He loves you. This God sent His Son. Amen. The cross did not, did not make God love us. For God so loved the world that He gave His Son long before the cross. God loved us already. The cross is the expression of God's love. The cross gave God a righteous foundation. When Jesus died at the cross, God tore the veil, which means all the goodness of God, all the, the love and the blessings of God rush out to meet sinful men righteously, judiciously. Amen. Today we can receive everything from God. But you see, let me tell you this. You can have as much of Christ as you want. No more, no less. If you are hungry, you can have much more of Him. If you're hungry for the Word, you can have much more of the Word. Come to Jesus, experience His goodness, and the goodness of God will lead you to repentance. Amen. I believe in repentance. Oh, Pastor Prince, believe in repentance, but I believe in true repentance, produced by a revelation of who God is. Not you trying to manufacture your own repentance, and he said, well, if you're sorry enough, God will forgive you. Well, how is sorry enough enough? To what extent is sorry enough enough? If your repentance is deep, how deep is deep and who decides what is deep? You decide. It's amazing. No wonder people don't come to Jesus. That woman at the well, Jesus never used the word repent her. He never even used the word repent. <laughs> he told her, he read her mail. The man you're living with now is not your husband. Oh, I perceive you're a prophet. He didn't say, you yeah, <laughs> He didn't even say that. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm too Singaporean right now. I must not forget my international audience. He was kind. It's amazing. The chapter before that, this is John 4, right? The woman, the well, and Jesus. John 3. A religious man came to Jesus at night. Jesus came to the woman by daytime, brought daylight, noontime. Nicodemus, the Pharisee, came to Jesus at night. The Nicodemus, with all his uh, collective intellectual achievements, and to be a Pharisee, you got to be very intelligent in the studies of that day and all that. Of all that, Jesus looked at him, you must be born again. But he never told that woman who had five husbands living in adultery, you must be born again. To Nicodemus, he never says, I'm the Messiah. To that woman, he says, the Messiah. Church, I think we need to wake up and realize the way we approach people, there must be something different. People who are proud, we may have to say, you need to be born again. Everything about you need to go. People who are already broken inside, they shun God's presence. We need to, have, we need to know how to approach them as well. And she sends the warmth of the fire without even knowing that she's repenting. I love Jesus, don't you? Amen. And she became an instant evangelist. She went out to a, sit, a town and says, come see a man who told me everything about myself. Hallelujah. Didn't follow the seven steps of becoming an evangelist. She became an instant evangelist. Just a moment with Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes in your daily walk or your weekly walk or your monthly walk, <laughs> if you do walk for exercise, <laughs> talk to the Lord. And sometimes what you, what you do is tell it to Jesus. I read in the Bible that John the Baptist was <clears throat> killed and the disciples came and told Jesus. Sad times, sorrowful times, tell Jesus. As you walk, tell Him. Tell Him about the sorrows in your heart. Tell Him about what is heavy on your heart. Tell Him about your worry, your fears, about your child. Just tell Him. Don't have to pray perfect prayers. Don't have to pray intelligent prayers. Don't have to say clever words. Just talk to the Lord. Just talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. And then tell him, we are happy about something, what thrills you, tell him. Another verse says that, the, and they came back and told Jesus all the things that they, they saw, the blind see, the deaf hear. They came and tell Jesus. All right, tell him about what you like to see. You like to see him in the Bible, say, I love it, I love it when I see you in the Scriptures, Lord. I love it, I, it thrills me, Lord, like no other thrill, Lord. I just love being with you, Lord. I love walking with you. I love having you listening to me. I'm telling you, church, just talking to Jesus. All of a sudden, there's an impartation I can't explain. You haven't even come to the place. Give me peace. Give me. You don't even come to that. Just talking to him, the peace is there. Amen? That's what the woman experienced, just talking to Jesus. There's a prophecy in Genesis 49 when old Jacob was about to pass on. He called his 12 sons together 
and he prophesied over them. And of Joseph, he said this, Joseph is a fruitful branch sitting by the well whose branches run over the wall. All right? It's a fruitful bough. Very interesting, in Genesis, uh, John 4, when Jesus met the woman, the Bible says he sat at the well that Jacob gave his son. And he was not too far away from the parcel of land where Jacob gave Joseph, the same Joseph of the story of Egypt. The only time he's mentioned in the Gospels is this, in this place. And Jesus was sitting on the well, and the prophecy is actually about Jesus. He's a fruitful branch. Even though tired, he saves. Even though tired, he delivers. Even though tired, he blesses. He's still fruitful. Joseph is a fruitful branch by the well, whose branches run over the wall, the wall of partition between Jew and Samaritan. His branches run over the wall. Jesus' blessing goes beyond human prejudices. Amen. Are you struggling spiritually or exhausted from trying to be a perfect Christian? Will you let us bless you with a copy of Joseph's foundational book, Destined to Reign, today? Find out why your Christian walk is not about what you can do for God, but what He has already done for you. Request your free copy of Destined to Reign by visiting josephprince.org new or texting new to 71239 today. Offer available to U.S. residents only. Okay, let's bring this to a close. I'll tell you a story. A very sad ending to this. All right? And it came from Saul. I don't know why he did this. No one eats until all the, my enemies are defeated. And by the way, when it comes to David, David says that all the earth may know there's a God in Israel. Jonathan said that this victory is a victory for Israel. But Saul said, my enemies, not enemies of Israel. You see, this is what he said actually. Uh, Benjamin, show them the entire verse, verse 24. And the men of Israel were distressed that day, for Saul had placed the people under oath, saying, Cursed is the man who eats any food until evening, before I have taken vengeance on my enemies. So none of the people tasted food. Now all the people of the land came to a forest, and there was honey on the ground. Now let me look up here. I'm bringing this to a close. We want one story, and then I'm going to close. Listen. People say that revival stops because of sin. Well, if revival stops because there's sin, it will never have begun. Because revivals happen where there's sin. There's a need for revival. Revival stop because men like this put in rules and regulations. Saul's religious flesh is legalistic. If he's so smart with all these laws, no one eats until, everyone fasts until our enemy is defeated. Why didn't he do it earlier? To defeat the enemies. And by the way, when David was about to, David says, I'll fight this Philistine, right? They brought him to King Saul. King Saul was the nearest, the tallest of any man in Israel. And if, if, if Goliath is tall, the nearest one to Goliath will be him. He should be the one out there fighting, isn't it? But he didn't fight. He didn't have the faith. But David had the faith. And God had to bring someone outside Israel because the spirit of unbelief was so prevalent, God had to bring a boy fresh, fresh from the fields of singing, the Lord is my shepherd, Amen. Surely goodness and mercy of a man who believes in God, a young man who believes in God. Where are the young men? A young man who believes in God, God had to bring him in into the camp of Israel. And if Saul is so great, God said, okay, you're going here. Tell you what, wear my armor, wear my armor. Your armor, your, your armor is so wonderful. Why don't you wear it? Why don't you wear it and fight Goliath? He won't have some glory, you see. So that if David does win, he's wearing Saul's armor. And David tried, uh, David disappeared in the armor. And David came out and said, I can't. <laughs> All right? He has to go based on be true to his anointing as a shepherd. He went as a shepherd boy, a sling and a stone. He had four stones. It just one stone knocked down Goliath. He had four stones. You know why four stones? The Bible says he collected five stones and put it in his pocket uh, back. You know why f f the, the, there are five stones? Because Goliath had four brothers. David on that day planned to kill all four. All five, I mean but they, they tucked tail and ran. Later on, they were killed by David's mighty man. David's mighty man says, David, you had your time, okay? This is our time. Amen. That's the faith he had, right? And, and, and Saul made a curse on any man. And Jonathan wasn't there, right? So Jonathan didn't hear the curse. So Jonathan went to the forest and there were honey, 
honey falling from the tree everywhere, the honeycombs and all that. And Jonathan took some and ate it. The story ends like this. Instead of killing the enemies, the momentum was lost because the enemies were defeated, but not completely defeated. That's why they came around in chapter 17. And this time God used uh, David. But he could have routed the enemy. But instead, he got lost with this idea of, you better follow my law. Later on, it will, it will be said that the enemies ran because of your kept my law. Flesh can become very legalistic. And then when he found out that Jonathan ate, you know what he said? This is what he said. Tell me what you have done, he asked Jonathan, his own son. Jonathan says, I only tasted a little honey with the end of the rod that was in my hand, so now I must die. So I answered, God do so more and also for you shall surely die, Jonathan. But the people said, to Saul, shall Jonathan die who has accomplished this great deliverance in Israel? Certainly not. As the Lord lives, not one hair of his head shall fall to the ground. For he has worked with God this day. It's one thing to work for God. It's another thing to work with God. You can work for God with your own ideas. Whether God appreciates it or not, it's another thing. But when you work with God, God says, move here, you move here. Stop here, stop here. You're working with God. He's working with God. I love the expression. So the people rescued Jonathan. He did not die. Then Saul returned from pursuing. You see, he returned from, so it was not a complete route. Now, I'll, I'll close with this story that I told you, and I'm close. In 1917, General Allen B of the British forces stepped into Jerusalem. He was a strong believer, by the way, and he believed in Bible prophecy. So he knew that Israel would come back to the land of Israel as a nation, but he rode his, his uh, horse. You can see this on YouTube in black and white. He refused to go into the city with his horse. He got off the city of, of the horse and he said this, my Lord rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. How can I ride in a, with a horse? So he, he walked all the way in. His men followed him, General Allenby, and uh, he liberated Jerusalem from the Ottoman Turkish rule at that time and uh, without firing one shot, not one shot. Okay? Now that was in uh, December 1917. Two months after that, in February, they found out that there was, in fact, they, they knew then that the strongest opposition was actually in a place called Mi'kmaq. Okay? At that point, no one was familiar with the name Mi'kmaq. And uh, by the way, Mi'kmaq is the place where not only uh, the Philistines fell, Pastor Mark fell. <laughs> the first time... The first time the pastors and I went to Mi'kmaq, I, I wanted to go to Mi'kmaq. Most of you don't go there because uh, your bus cannot go there. It's very rocky and the ravines and all that. So you have to stop way somewhere else and you have to walk like nearly an hour, a slightly an hour plus to reach the, the gorge, okay? So, uh, but I, I, I'm, I love the Old Testament. I love the story of the Bible. I wanted to see Mi'kmaq. So I told my pastors, uh, not, not the, the pictures you saw, that was a, a, another, another trip, but this is an older trip. So I said, let's go. And Pastor Mark was there, Pastor Daniel, Pastor Lawrence, Pastor Darren. And we all went there. Okay, we stopped and we took a long walk. And all the way down, I saw the place where Jonathan climbed and all that. And we were very happy. Pastor Mark was the happiest. Oh, nice. Oh, the weather, very nice. The, the weather was cool, but the sun was quite bright. But it was cool and dry. Not good. Can deceive you. You need to drink plenty of water. All right? So Pastor Mark, you know what he did? Oh, he was dancing. And he took off his, his jersey. All right? Now, the thing is this. When the sun is shining and the air is dry, you don't take off your jersey. Number one, it freaks all of us out, number one. All right? Because in those days, Pastor Mark was quite... Never mind. Today, I can't say it anymore. Today's world is so polite. You know, okay? So, okay. Uh, he, took, oh, he was dancing. All right? He was very happy. And after a while, we were talking among ourselves and looking at the mountain, taking pictures and all that. There was no more sound from him. We turned around, he fainted. <laughs> you can ask Pastor Lawrence about this story you know, from their perspective. And he fainted. We went to him. We tried to recite him. He went, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I'll never forget that. We, we pick him up. We pick him up. All right? And put it... Uh, 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 da Pastor Daniel was on, on one side and Pastor Darren on the other side. And he was, I still remember him. Uh, <laughs> and we had to walk nearly an hour back 
we pour water on him, let him drink, and I was concerned about heat exhaustion and all that. And finally, we reached our bus, and our, one of our guides started running towards uh, Pastor Mark. We thought he was going to give him some medicine or something like that. And he, when he stopped in front of Pastor Mark, he took pictures. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, uh. <laughs> It was very funny. Anyway, that happened. I, I don't, I, that came to my mind. Anyway, back to the story. Let me finish the story. So Janet Allenby realized there was a, a garrison of uh, the Ottoman Turks on Mi'kmash. And, and they might pose to be a problem because this one, uh, Jerusalem was liberated without firing a shot. But down there, they are ready to fight. Okay? So he had a major he sent down there. His name was Vivian Gilbert. Major Vivian Gilbert. Uh, major Vivian Gilbert. Most of this came from his uh, handwritten uh, uh, hist historical uh, notes and all that. And Major Vivian Gilbert, uh, also a believer, he said, I he remember hearing Mi'kmash somewhere in his Bible. So he went to his Bible. In those days, they don't have PC study Bible. They can't search. He has to search by hand. And he found the story, the story we read just on 1 Samuel 14. And he realized that, that uh, the enemies will never expect the British forces to come by way of the mountain. Because they're already, all their, their, their defense is all facing the, uh, the, the gradual slope on the other side. And General Allenby had already prepared his army, all right, in the days to come to attack from that side. But that will mean a lot of casualties even on the, on the British uh, forces, okay? But then this, this uh, Major Vivian Gilbert said, when he read the Bible, he said, he told, he, he actually went to General Allenby and says, I think we can find a way up the mountain. They will never expect us to come from there. So one night, he took a few of his men. He went up there. He realized there's a passageway. Now, they didn't go by the same way as Jonathan. Jonathan actually scaled with their hands in broad daylight in front of the enemies. They went by night. They found another way up, all right? And the, all the forces went by that way. The next day, the Turks were routed, all right? This is history, okay? So God repeated the miracle of Mi'kmash, amen? In 1918, that happened in February 18, 1918. Mi'kmash was, was liberated. So here we go, all right? The God of Mi'kmash, the God of Jonathan is our Father in heaven. Jonathan was a servant, we are family. You understand that? But what he's trying to tell you, uh, what he's saying to you is not so much of physical enemies. Amen. Today we don't kill our physical enemies. Today we bless our physical enemies. Amen. Amen. But your spiritual enemies, the stress, the forces, the lying symptoms, the one that's trying to take your, your child away from you, your, your boy away from you, that, that bondage, that drug that you are addicted to, that, that you say, I can, I can let go anytime. I can stop anytime. But you know you're in bondage to it. Those are your Philistines. And the answer is the same. The Lord saves. The Lord loves you and the Lord saves. The God who flung the stars is the same God who binds your broken heart. And He loves you. This God sent His Son. Amen. The cross did not, did not make God love us. For God so loved the world that He gave His Son. Long before the cross, God loved us already. The cross is the expression of God's love. The cross gave God a righteous foundation. When Jesus died at the cross, God tore the veil, which means all the goodness of God, all the, the love and the blessings of God rush out to meet sinful men righteously, judiciously. Amen. Today we can receive everything from God. But you see, let me tell you this. You can have as much of Christ as you want. No more, no less. If you are hungry, you can have much more of Him. If you're hungry for the Word, you can have much more of the Word. And I think that it's important that we feed our children with stories like this. My parents, it's not hard to share this story. Don't go into the deep stuff. All right? You can talk about Pastor Mark. To get them laughing. I shared the make much story with my son. All right? And he laughed and laughed. We ended up with me as Pastor Mark. And he's holding me like this. I bring you to the bus. Bring you to the bus. And he dropped me in there. And he laughed and laughed and cackle and cackle. Let's do it again. Like, come, I carry you, Pastor Mark, to the, to the bus. All right? But put stories, put seeds of God's Word in your heart. Pastor Mark is not a, a, a Bible story, but it helps us when we talk to our children. Amen? Tell them the Lord saves. The Lord saves. You're, you're worried in, it's in school. The Lord saves. Amen? You're concerned about your heart full of butterflies in your stomach. The Lord saves. Look to Him. All right? Victory is not, there's no butterflies. Victory is even with the butterflies, all right, you still step out there. God loves it when His people with butterflies in their stomach says, let's go up. 
God is with us. He loves it. And there are many young men here today and many young men watching this. They don't respond. There's a Jonathan out there. There's an armor bearer out there. Praise the Lord. Every head bowed, every eye closed all across this place. Give praise to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Every head bowed, every eye closed all across this place. Friends, I'm going to pray a blessing over you for this coming week. I believe that the Lord will save you this week. I believe the Lord will save any situation that needs saving this week. I believe the Lord will save those areas of your life that needs His saving. The Lord saves. His name, Yahshua. Yeshua. Yahweh saves. Yahweh saves. There's a name Jesus in Hebrew. Yahweh saves. The Lord saves. David says to Goliath, the Lord will deliver you. The Lord saves. The Lord delivers. He's not a Lord who just stands still. In fact, He tells us, you stand still. You rest. Let me do the saving. You rest. Let me do the del delivering. And friend, salvation happens when you are still. God doesn't want you to put in effort to try to save yourself. Any effort is saying that God, I'm not a sinner. I can save myself. So God says, stop all your efforts. Like a drowning person, as long as he's, he's still strong, you cannot save him from drowning. He must, be, he must be totally helpless. Then he can be saved. So you must come to a place, you say, God, I'm a sinner. Then God will say to you, no problem. I am a savior. You come to God as a savior. And say this from your heart after me. Say this from your heart. Say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for what I've just heard. Thank you for your word. And thank you that you send your son, Jesus Christ, Yahweh in the flesh, to die on the cross for all my sins. And on the third day, you raised him from the dead without my sins. I thank you that today I'm raised with Christ before your eyes without my sins. I'm accepted, highly favored in the beloved Christ. And that's how you see me forever. Jesus Christ is my Lord. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. And all the people said, Amen. Stand to your feet. Praise the Lord. Lift your hands all across this place. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray, Father, that everyone under the sound of my voice will experience your wonderful goodness. That goodness, Lord, that caused you to must needs go through Samaria. Sit on that well just for one precious soul that has lost her way. Lord, I thank you for your love. And I pray, Father, in Jesus' name, that you will cause this, all these young men and women here, Lord, and everyone said amen. amen, that they'll go forth, Father, with that message, that gospel, that good news, Lord, not to shove religion down people's throats, Lord, but to shine for your glory and to share the good news that, God, you're not mad at the world, that you're not angry with them, that you send your son to die for their sins, that you're saying, welcome home, welcome home, come home to abundance, you lost your way. I see your heart. The world judges you by your action. But I see you lost your way. Come home. Come home. The good shepherd is calling for them. Will you be the voice to call them back home? Amen. Let the Lord lead you. Let the Lord open up. Never shove. Never force. Never be legalistic. Legalism is of the flesh. Never be like Saul. But let the Lord lead you. Will you? Praise the Lord. In Jesus' name. And may your faces be firmer and fatter in flesh than all the children of the world. May you always shine brighter and brighter than all the children of the world. Amen. In the time of darkness, may the Lord be seen in your life. May, may you cause that momentum of victory happen in your life. And let all Israel, all ch the church, enjoy what you started with God. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for this week, for all these precious people under the sound of my voice, all those that are watching by way of television. Father, I thank you, Lord that this coming week, the Lord bless you and the Lord keep, preserve and protect you and your families from all evil, from all dangers, from all harm. The Lord preserve your life and the Lord shine on you, make His face to be radiant upon you throughout this week. And the Lord blesses you with the blessings of Father Abraham and the Lord favors you and the Lord lift up His countenance on you and your families and cause you and your loved ones to enjoy 
is health, wholeness, and peace. In Jesus' name. And all the people said, Amen. Shout, the Lord saves! God bless you. We'll see you again. Thank you for tuning in to Joseph Prince Ministries. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to receive all our latest videos. And join us this Sunday for church on Grace Revolution Church Online. 